It's one of the most heartbreaking moments in The Lord of the Rings. A moment when one of its greatest villains might have found redemption, were it not for ill-timed harsh words. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we tackle the question, what if Gollum repented? As always, I've used my usual approach of mapping travels, timelines, and using Tolkien's own letters in an effort to craft today's theory. First, we pick up at the point in the story where the deviation would most likely take place. In this instance, we have a very clear moment in time, March 12th, 3019. Gollum has just returned from visiting Shelob, setting into motion his plan to betray Frodo and Sam. As he returns to the stairs of Kirith Ungol, he finds the two hobbits asleep. Gollum looked at them. A strange expression passed over his lean, hungry face. The gleam faded from his eyes, and they went dim and gray, old and tired. A spasm of pain seemed to twist him, and he turned away, peering back up towards the pass, shaking his head as if engaged in some interior debate. Then he came back, and slowly putting out a trembling hand, very cautiously he touched Frodo's knee. But almost the touch was a caress. For a fleeting moment, could one of the sleepers have seen him, they would have thought that they beheld an old weary hobbit, shrunken by the years that had carried him far beyond his time, beyond friends and kin, and the fields and streams of youth, an old, starved, pitiable thing. But at that touch, Frodo stirred and cried out softly in his sleep, and immediately Sam was wide awake. The first thing he saw was Gollum, pawing at Master as he thought. Hey you, he said roughly, what are you up to? Nothing, nothing, said Gollum softly. Nice Master. I dare say, said Sam, but where have you been to? Sneaking off and sneaking back, you old villain. Gollum withdrew himself and a green glint flickered under his heavy lids. Almost spider-like he looked now, crouched back on his bent limbs with his protruding eyes. The fleeting moment had passed beyond recall. This brief pivotal moment would make Gollum's betrayal inevitable. Tolkien would say in letter 246 that it was, for him, perhaps the most tragic moment of the entire tale. This moment when Sam fails to note the complete change in Gollum's tone. As for what Gollum feels at this moment, I believe we can look to Gandalf's words about Gollum for a clue. Here in the early pages of The Fellowship of the Ring, Gandalf talks about what Gollum experienced in his meeting Bilbo. There was a little corner of Gollum's mind that was still his own, and light came through it, as through a chink in the dark, a light out of the past. It was actually pleasant, I think, to hear a kindly voice again, bringing up memories of wind and trees, and sun on the grass, and such forgotten things. These connections to his previous life, and his affection for his newfound master, could have led Gollum to true repentance. However, as Tolkien also says in letter 246, Sam plainly did not fully understand Frodo's motives, or his distress in the incident of the Forbidden Pool. If he had understood better what was going on between Frodo and Gollum, things might have turned out differently in the end. So what if Sam had fully understood Frodo's pity for Gollum at this moment? What if Sam recognized a change in Gollum and was able to meet him in that moment with pity rather than scorn? This is where we pick up with our theory. Sam wakes to see not an evil slinking creature, but a weary old hobbit, stretched far beyond his time. He has a similar realization as Bilbo once did in the pages of The Hobbit. A sudden understanding, a pity mixed with horror welled up in his heart. A glimpse of endless, unmarked days without light or hope of betterment. Hard stone, cold fish, sneaking and whispering. All these thoughts passed in a flash of a second. He trembled. And then quite suddenly, in another flash, as if lifted by a new hope and resolve, Sam finally sees Gollum as Smeagol. Like Bilbo, Sam has this moment of clarity understanding and pitying Smeagol, 
and together the three heroes would venture on from the stairs of Kirithungal, making their way closer to Mount Doom. The repentant Smeagol warned Sam and Frodo of the true peril of Shelob's lair, warning them of the giant spider that lies in wait. Together, and with Smeagol as a guide, they successfully passed through the tunnels on March 13, 3019. They are also able to avoid detection by the orcs from the Tower of Kirith Ungol. Thus, Frodo is never captured, his mithril shirt is not taken, and Sam does not need to bear the One Ring. In total, this cuts out roughly two days of their journey, and the three heroes view Mount Doom from the Morgai on March 14th. In the canon story, Sam and Frodo, in their orc disguises, are forced to join a company of orcs. However, since they have come to this part of the journey two days earlier, Sauron's orcs have not yet begun amassing at the Black Gate, for Aragorn will not march out from Minas Tirith for two more days. By the time the host of Gondor and Rohan departs Minas Tirith, Frodo, Sam, and Smeagol will be two days closer to Mount Doom. They will no doubt still have much need of caution on their journey, for the orcs will indeed be traveling to Udun to face off against the army of men. Without the whips of the orcs to drive them farther and faster, Frodo, Sam, and Gollum do lose a short amount of time going at a more cautious pace, likely just a few hours. Frodo and Sam will also be without their orc armor disguises, which they acquired in the Tower of Kirith Ungol in the canon story. However, with Smeagol as their guide, they continue on their path, his centuries of experience in stealth and sneaking helping them greatly, not to mention his experience in Mordor itself. For Gollum had first come to Mordor in 2980 of the Third Age, and according to Unfinished Tales, he would not be captured by Sauron until the year 3017, 37 years later. On March 20th, as Aragorn and his company ride north toward the Black Gate, Frodo, Sam, and Smeagol leave the road and head south toward Mount Doom. As in the canon story, they lighten their burdens the following day, casting aside their gear. They then reach the foot of Mount Doom on March 22nd. Despite the change in Smeagol, we would see the same effects of the ring upon Frodo. Its power grows as it draws nearer to the evil place of its creation. The last stage of the journey to Aradruin came, and it was a torment greater than Sam had ever thought that he could bear. Now for the last gasp, said Sam as he struggled to his feet. He bent over Frodo, rousing him gently. Frodo groaned, but with a great effort of will he staggered up, and then he fell upon his knees again. He raised his eyes to the dark slopes of Mount Doom towering above him, and then pitifully, he began to crawl forward on his hands. Sam looked at him and wept in his heart, but no tears came to his dry and stinging eyes. Come, Mr. Frodo, he cried. I can't carry it for you. But we can carry you, and it is well, Smeagol adds. And together, Sam and Smeagol carry Frodo up the slopes of Mount Doom. Slowly they scale Orodruin, even when forced to do so by crawling like insects. While the host of men is still two days from the Black Gate, their march still draws Sauron's eye. And while throughout their journey, Gollum would have played a pivotal role in their safely reaching Mount Doom, he could not be wholly rid of the influence of the Ring. As Tolkien once said of Gollum's repentance, if he had, what could then have happened? The course of the entry into Mordor and the struggle to reach Mount Doom would have been different, and so would the ending. The interest would have shifted to Gollum, I think, and the battle that would have gone on between his repentance and his new love on one side, and the ring. Though the love would have been strengthened daily, it could not have wrested the mastery from the ring. Thus, throughout their journey in Mordor, Gollum would be experiencing a great internal struggle between the ring and his repentance. The three finally come to the very cracks of doom, the Samoth Naur, where Sauron long ago had forged the One Ring. But what would have transpired here, in the darkest of places where the power of the One Ring is strongest? 
In the end, no one could resist the temptation of the One Ring in Mount Doom. Frodo still turns to declare, I have come, but I do not choose now to do what I came to do. I will not do this deed. The ring is mine. Placing the ring on his finger, Frodo vanishes. Sauron is immediately aware and sends forth his Nazgul. Perhaps not from the Black Gate roughly 80 miles away, but from their positions shadowing the host of the West in Athelion. As the Nazgul race toward Mount Doom, the defining moment of the age unfolds within its fiery walls. Gollum in an instant wrestles with his love of Frodo and the pull of the ring. Still overcome by the one, he attacks Frodo, biting off his finger and taking the ring for his own. But even now, with the one ring returned to him, Gollum's repentance is not fully cast aside. The conflict within him remains. It is true he desired the ring, but he also cares for his master and does not wish the evil of Sauron to come to bear. Thus, with possession of the ring and sensing the servants of the enemy and the might of Sauron himself bearing down upon him, Smeagol casts himself into the fires below. He meets his end along with his precious ring and in doing so, destroys the power of Sauron, saves the world and saves Frodo. While this ending may come as a shock, we need look no further than to Tolkien's letter 246 for the evidence. I think that in some queer, twisted, and pitiable way, Gollum would have tried, not maybe with conscious design, to satisfy both. Certainly at some point, not long before the end, he would have stolen the ring, or taken it by violence, as he does in the actual tale. But possession satisfied, I think he would then have sacrificed himself for Frodo's sake and have voluntarily cast himself into the fiery abyss. I think that an effect of his partial regeneration by love would have been a clearer vision when he claimed the ring. He would have perceived the evil of Sauron and suddenly realized that he could not use the ring and had not the strength or stature to keep it in Sauron's despite. The only way to keep it and hurt Sauron was to destroy it and himself together. And in a flash, he may have seen that this would also be the greatest service to Frodo. Indeed, the pity of Bilbo, Frodo, and Sam would rule the fate of many. Through Smeagol's sacrifice, Middle-earth is saved. But would Frodo and Sam survive? Would the eagles have still made it to the mountain in time, since the Battle of the Black Gate would have never transpired? Should they have indeed been saved, Frodo's life would play out much the same as before. He would return to the Shire alongside his fellow hobbits, reclaiming it from Saruman and his ruffians. And still he would fall ill on the anniversary of the Witch King's stab, though notably not on the anniversary of Shelob's lair, for in this tale he was never stung. And eventually on September 29, 3021, he would still sail into the West. He would remain the heroic ring bearer who gave everything he had to get the ring to the fires of Mount Doom. He would remember Smeagol not as the corrupted creature who fell into the fire when fate intervened, but the tormented hobbit whose last act was to save Frodo from the great darkness. Now let me know what you guys think of this theory. Are there changes you would make? And what other theories would you like to see me cover here on the channel? It is well over 60 years since the great ring bearer sailed to the uttermost west. An old hobbit sits in his home, mourning the recent loss of his wife, decades after the loss of his best friend. Eleanor Gardner enters Bag End, visiting her father months after the passing of her mother Rosie. Sam presents to Eleanor the Red Book of Westmarch, so that she may be the next keeper of this great book started many years ago by Bilbo Baggins. Sam knows his time is drawing near. Soon his life will end, and the gardener name will be carried on by Eleanor and his other 12 children. His thoughts are of Rosie and of Frodo. He wonders what lies beyond the mortal world, and if he may see his Rosie once more. He wonders if Frodo is yet alive in the Undying Lands, for he would have loved to see his friend once more before the end. However, since Shelob's sting had been avoided, 
Sam had never become a ring bearer, and thus he would live out his remaining days in the Shire. There would be no reunion for Frodo and Sam during their mortal lives, but perhaps one would come beyond, where the spirits of men go to a fate which only Eru knows, beyond the circles of the world. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, CCDC Red Team, Joe Tepper, The Mighty Mim, Andrew Carlisle, Swirled Traveler, Matthew Jeffrey, Leo Vittori, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Berto Berg, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Micah Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description to purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.